Dr. Nabanban 7 was an absolute whirlwind. And just like every other chapter, there are a ton of secrets and theories to unpack in this one. So no need for any superfluous yapping. Let's just get into these 10 secrets that I have for you guys in Garton of Bonbon 7. At number one, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, there's a secret room. A secret room has become a reoccurring secret in these chapters. And these rooms all use the exact same formula, which is you have to find a secret keycard to find a secret room. And inside of that room, there's usually a secret mural of a new character we haven't met yet that's going to come out in the future chapters. So what you have to do in this one is right at the end before Syringion is preparing to do his bamboozle secret plan, you have to go right to the beginning of the game where you have those surgical rooms that you start off in. In the room where you find a hammer, there's a corner closet which has a green keycard in it. If you take that green keycard all the way to the end of the game in the tool mark, there's another secret keycard door that only opens using the green keycard and it's found in a space right after that baby chase scene. And this is where you find the secret room, just like all the other secret rooms in the previous chapters. You've got the big garden of Banban Ban mural on the left side, a new character in the middle, and a whiteboard with a bunch of scientific writing on the wall. And you can also find the final case report in here as well. On one of the whiteboards, we also see who's immune to Sir Dadadu's control. We already knew about Stinger Flynn and Jumbo Josh, too smart, too dumb. But we also learned that Slow Selene is too fast to be affected by it. And we're not told why, but the new character and Zolfius are also unaffected. But anyway, that's a good segue onto the next secret, the new character Brashista. The secret room is the first time we actually see what Brashista looks like but it's not the first time we're told about Brashista. Brashista is what you get when a mommy paintbrush and a daddy anteater have a baby. And based on the beret on its head, you can tell that this is a pretty creative mascot. And also when you go into the hallway of the theater, you can see that the posters showing previous plays have been directed by them. But that's not the only thing about Brashista, and that takes me on to secret number three, the underground family. Over the last few chapters, we've been teased this image. It's a purple wall that's slowly being stripped away. As it becomes more clear, we're introduced to a new mutant character. But now with the release of the trailer for the Garden of Banban 8, it tells us more of a story. This mural on the wall is being referred to as the underground family, kind of like the predecessors to the ones we know of now. Within that family, we've seen a lot of the villains we've met so far, including Brashista, but more importantly, including Banban. It seems as though this crew was the original family of mascots, but they were all failures and had to permanently not be presented to children. And rather than disposing of them, they've just been tucked away deep in the facility and that's why we're meeting them now. But I'll get into that a little bit more later. On to detail number four, the scepter piece. Basically, the entire game of Garten of Banban 6 is about finding the scepter piece. And once you realize the center has been stolen by Syringion, you think that Garten of Banban 7 will be about finding that. But did you know that you can actually find that center piece literally in the first few minutes of the game? When Syringion takes you into that surgical room with all the wires on the ground, there's a desk on the left side. And if you're curious and went around there, you can see the center of the scepter piece sitting right there underneath the desk. It's not hidden somewhere secretive or anything like that, it's just lying there. You can even interact with it, but you can't take it because you get a notification saying it's not yours to take. Anyway, on to secret detail number five, the YouTuber cameos. They really stepped it up this time with the YouTuber cameos in this one. Even though I was in the last chapter, I really liked what they did here. In this chapter alone, there are a total of 10 cameos from YouTubers, and they all play Jovanium citizens. But they really diversified this time, and they got some non-English speaking YouTubers. I was particularly impressed with Fusion Z Gamer's performance because I didn't even realize it was him, I thought it was a professional voice actor. But if you go into the credits of the game, you can see all 10 of the YouTubers, who they are and what they played as. Anyway, onto secret detail number six, the impossible combination. Do you remember this memorization puzzle right before the slug baby monster comes to kill you? Did you know that you can actually finish it? I had a sneaking suspicion that you could do this during my playthrough because right after the puzzle showed itself, I actually pressed on the right button. It did make me think that maybe there's an order you can press that's correct. And then I found a YouTuber called Foxplay that did do that. You can go through the entire order of the pattern, but there's unfortunately nothing good that comes from it. You're still destined to be doomed by the baby big monster from Resident Evil thing. But I thought it was kind of cool that you could actually go through with it. That's kind of funny. Anyway, onto secret detail number seven, the secret message. There's actually a secret note in the classroom that you can't pick up, but you can just read by zooming in on it. It's a note sitting on the desk right in front of the Juvenium infant. It states, Dear father, I have been taken captive by a crazed creature. If I don't make it out of here alive, please know that I am appreciative for all you've done for myself and the others. This message has taken a lot of effort to write as I have no hands to write with. At least be proud of that. Please. We know that the Juvenium infants refer to Syringion as their father, and he's designed them in a way so that they are very, very loyal, and they're devoted to making him proud. But another reason why I found this quite interesting is because it almost sounds like it's coming from the perspective of a child that we're looking for. We're presuming 
presumed to be the father of the children we're looking for, and they've been captured by a crazed creature as well. So maybe this parallel was designed so that we feel empathetic towards Syringion and his children as well. But speaking of Syringion, on to secret detail number 8, his secret voice lines. Once you go off on your mission to find Jumbo Josh, Syringion stays exactly where he is. And if you come back to him and talk to him, he actually gives you some secret voice lines. These voice lines are actually pretty nuts because they give us so much lore. But I'll summarize it for you. He reminisces about a time where Sir Dadudu was in his prime, someone that had incomparable ambition and dedication. But eventually a certain event happens where the mutants down here are captured, most likely when the people that are running the facility decide that the underground family are permanently not ready to be presented. And in the process of being imprisoned in the lower levels of the facility, Sir Dadudu is betrayed by Syringion. Syringion also explains that Sir Dadudu is after the people that betrayed him, which are Syringion and the people that created this facility. Not necessarily us. He also explains how the scepter originally was a prop made for Queen Bouncelia, and Syringion actually did the experiments which gave it the powers to control people. It imprints the mindset of the person that's holding the scepter on the victims. And that's why Sir Dadudu can control mascots. But anyway, that's enough lore for now, on to secret detail number 9, Eyeless Syringion. While you play the game, Syringion has been programmed so that his eyes constantly follow you. But this also happens while you're not even in a room with him. So as you go on on your journey to find Jumbo Josh in the city of Sisinjion, he's still watching you. And if you take your drone all the way back to that wiry surgical room that he's initially telling you about the mission in, you find this terrifying version of Syringion with his eyes rolled backwards. This is probably the closest version of hellish Syringion we're ever gonna see, but it's pretty damn scary. This actually gave me a mini jump scare when I was playing during the game. But anyway, on to secret detail number 10, Flumbo. There's a massive plot twist that happens at the end of the game, so spoiler warning now. We are introduced to an alternative blue Banban -ban that's hiding behind a sticker of the red Banban -ban on the family wall. And then we even get to see this Banban -ban in the trailer for the Garden of Banban -ban 8. So who is this guy and who's the real Banban? -ban? Well, first of all, if you dig into the game files, you can see that this blue Banban -ban is referred to as original Banban. -ban. Even though this is most likely just a placeholder name, it's a pretty damn specific placeholder name for a character that important. And then when we look at the underground family's mural on the wall, we don't see the blue Banban, -ban, we see the red one, which essentially tells us that the blue one was the original one that's meant to be presented to children. And the red one is the one that's meant to be shunned and imprisoned in the lower levels of the facility. Have we been tricked this entire time? Did the red Banban -ban put stickers of himself over all of the murals of the blue one throughout the facility, making it seem as though he's the main character, when in reality the actual main character is the blue Banban. -ban. In the trailer for 8, Banban -ban also insinuates that he basically shoved the blue one in the closet, hiding him away so that he can do anything he wants. But here's another fun theory. Not so long ago, the Euphoric Brothers released something called the Chronicles of Banban, -ban, a behind-the-scenes sneak peek of how the game was made. And in there, they tell us that Banban -ban was originally called Flumbo. Could this be a nod towards this original version of Banban? -ban? Is his name Flumbo? And they just tease it to us right to our faces. Oh man, the plot just keeps on thickening, but I love it. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to my second channel, Erosa, so you don't miss out on any of my Let's Play like the one I did for this game. Oh, and don't forget to like the video. Goodbye, everybody.